Hi y'all, Mila the Hangry Woman here, and today I'm doing a really fun video. This is why you see my phone sitting here in front of me. We are going to look at some examples of the way that diabetes is represented in media. Some of the examples are stigmatizing, some of the examples are really funny and actually pretty accurate and I think that it's really important to just show how sometimes portrayals in pop culture can be rooted in stigma but also can be represented in a way that is respectful and honoring people with diabetes. Some of these examples made me really mad. Some of these I laughed so hard and some of these I feel like are just a great representation of diabetes. So we're gonna dive in and we're gonna start with New Girl. Season 3 episode 22 is called Dance and there is a really interesting diabetes reference in this particular episode. In this scene, the characters Coach, Schmidt, Nick, and Winston are talking about how they can be the best adult chaperones. If you've never watched New Girl, those four characters are absolutely a mess. None of them should probably be chaperoning a school dance, but they are. So they're given their respective tasks and Coach is basically telling everybody where to go and what to do. And this is where a reference to diabetes is made. I love them with all my heart, but they will your feelings sometimes he's right i remember sticks and stones may break your bones but not if you're a fat kid with calcium deficiency schmidt you're on snack table duty keep the chip bowls full don't let the kids spike the punch and make sure diabetic amy only has four cookies diabetic amy ain't gonna get no cookies on my watch mm, she she has to have at least two or she'll pass out she's getting nothing as at far as i'm concerned at least two or she'll pass out all right this is one of the ones that made me laugh and that I, I thought honestly was hilarious because I think that it speaks to the accuracy of what it's like living with diabetes. And I think that it's really, it shows a lot of caring and a lot of heart that Coach realizes that Amy, the student who has diabetes, does need at least two cookies because she's dancing, she'll be exercising, so she might have hypoglycemia and two cookies are needed. I think the stigmatizing part comes in kind of on uh, Schmidt's end where he says, you know, sh diabetic Amy's getting nothing as far as I'm concerned, I'll make sure she has no cookies. And that's kind of the misunderstanding of people with diabetes can't eat sugar. That is not exactly true. And so it was really great that coach corrects him and says, no, actually she's going to need those cookies because she's gonna be dancing. So I love this example. It shows the caring from coach, but it also gives him the ability and space to correct a misconception about diabetes. So I love that scene. I think it's really funny. And it's just, you know, a an oddly good representation of an interaction about diabetes. This next example is from season seven, episode one of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And I love this show. It is just, it's the funniest. It has the funniest characters, the most ridiculous humor, and is just hysterical. And so when I was doing a rewatch of it, I had remembered that there's like a whole season where Mac, <laughs> the character Mac, is dealing with diabetes from putting on masks. Um, this example is about his diagnosis in the doctor's office, and I think this is like a really interesting and accurate portrayal of a diagnosis for a lot of reasons, but I'm gonna give you the clip and then we will talk about it. Did you want me to read these test results or not? Yeah, I'm just trying to move it. It's like a brick wall. <laughs> you try to move it, Doc. No, no, no. Here, read the results, though. Well, I see uh, severe dehydration here, multiple vitamin deficiencies, anemia, low blood pressure. Ooh, Mac, look, I don't want you to fret, okay? I'm gonna get you on my exercise program. I'm gonna get you fit as a fiddle. These are, these are your results, Mr. Reynolds. What? No, those can't be my results. I'm healthy as shit. Well, uh, not according to your tests. <laughs> I'm healthier than you, bro? No, 
Well, I, I wouldn't exactly say you're healthy. You have type 2 adult onset diabetes. <laughs> type 2 adult onset diabetes? Shh. What does that mean for me? Well, it means you're going to have to inject yourself several times a day with insulin. Or else you probably need to think about losing a little weight. <sighs> but I'm healthy besides diabetes. Um, no. But I'm more healthier than he is, I think is the point that you're trying to make. Even with the diabetes. Dude, stop I saying am... diabetes. You sound like an app. You okay, man? So there are a few things in this portrayal that to me are inaccurate, but I wish they were accurate. And you're gonna be like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? And so there are a couple things that like I wish actually happened in real life. So for one, when the doctor gives the diagnosis, he says you have type two adult onset diabetes. I think that's really an interesting way to frame it. Usually people just walk out of the doctor's office knowing that they have type two diabetes and they're not really quite sure how it's onset or how it is caused for them. So I think that specification is really interesting and I think that it it shows that they were very specific in doing that. It seems like there was like a conscious effort to distinguish. I think secondly, the interesting thing is that the doctor says, well, you'll either have to inject yourself with insulin several times a day or you'll lose weight. Typically, insulin is not the first line treatment for people with type 2 diabetes. Oral medications and lifestyle adjustments are tried first, and then if there's no progression or no progress, no decrease in A1C, um, and numbers don't improve, then insulin is kind of the second line. So I think it's really interesting that the doctor brings up insulin like right after the diagnosis, but he also mentions you might need to lose some weight, which signals that Mac is dealing with insulin resistance from the mass he has cultivated. So I think that all of those are, um, really interesting. <laughs> the one thing that I will say is that I love that Mac asks questions. Um, as a patient, he asks like, am I still healthy with my diabetes? The way that he says it even is just like so hilarious to me. And so I think that that's accurate also, you know, as a patient who gets diagnosed with diabetes, you sometimes have all of these questions that you want to ask. Those are some like really funny moments that I think pop up in Always Sunny and I think that they were really respectful with type 2 diabetes and they did not treat it as a joke, which I really appreciate, especially for a show that is inclined to be comedy. This is one of my least favorite portrayals of diabetes. It is season one, episode one of Emily in Paris. I think that while I don't like this portrayal and this representation, I think this is how a lot of people actually feel about people with diabetes. This example really exudes a lot of fat phobia. It also blames people for their illness, but it has a nice little dig at pharma, <laughs> which I, it did, that did make me chuckle. But I think that the, this example in particular does perpetuate some stigma. And for people who don't know anything about diabetes, they would think that this is really how life with diabetes works. I think the other thing is that um, one of the characters is smoking in the scene and Emily says to him, well, cigarettes cause diabetes and cancer. Cigarettes don't cause diabetes. Cigarettes are not good for you, but they are not a cause of diabetes. Cigarettes and smoking can be harmful to people with diabetes because it increases your risk for cardiovascular disease. It increases your risk for thinning blood vessels. And those are two things that are unhelpful to the overall health of people with diabetes and put you at greater risk for cardiovascular events like heart attacks and strokes. So I want to share this example. It's one that like every time I watch it, it makes me cringe but it's an example that's out there in a very popular TV show and it's one of those things that just kind of reframes the way that 
people think about diabetes and reframes, I think, some understanding of how people actually think about diabetes. This is Monsieur Glossard. He's the founder of Savoie. Oh, Emily Cooper. Hello. Oh. <laughs> it is so nice to meet you, Mr. Broussard. It's a pleasure. Welcome to Paris. So, you've come to teach the French some American tricks? <laughs> I'm sure we have a lot to learn from each other. But your experience is not with fashion and luxury brands. True. Most of my experience has been in promoting pharmaceuticals and geriatric care facilities. In Chicago? Yes. I mean, we. Oui. <laughs> I was in Chicago once, and I ate the deep dish pizza. That is our specialty. We take a lot of pride. Uh, it was uh, vigorous. How do you say? Disgusting. <laughs> like a quiche made of cement. Oh no, you must have gone to Blue Malnati's. And the people are so fat. Why are they all so fat? Well, perhaps from the disgusting food. True. We are in the midst of an obesity epidemic. In fact, Merck was one of our biggest clients. They make a diabetes drug that we marketed the heck out of. Sales went up 63%. So you create the disease, then you treat the disease, and then you market the treatments of the disease. Well, perhaps stop eating. There is no money, but... True. Cigarettes cause diabetes and cancer. Yes. Well, smoking is a pleasure. And without pleasure, who are we? So I think that exchange is a bit cringeworthy. It blames people with diabetes for our illness, which is completely unfair. It attributes diabetes only to what you eat and not the 40 different factors that have to do with living with diabetes. I think additionally, it is just a cringeworthy conversation and it does nothing to add to the education of what diabetes is, which that's not what the show is there for. It's there for entertainment. And Hollywood is not always known for being the most accurate, but that's okay. Actually, I take that back. That's not okay. And I think when it comes to discussing chronic disease or different illnesses, accuracy is really important because the representation of that illness represents the people who are living with it. And this is one of those just like stigma dog whistles, I feel like. It just encompassed all of the blame and shame and stigma that you could possibly imagine within a 30 second exchange. We're twice as likely to get diagnosed with diabetes. While genetics are a factor, diabetes has also been linked to obesity, poor diet, and inactivity. But don't get it twisted. It's not all our fault. For a lot of us, it's hard to be fit living in a food desert with no decent health care or gyms. And let's be honest, who has time to exercise when you're working two jobs to make ends meet? Even if you can make time, it's dicey. Because if someone sees you running in the hood, they'll give you something to run from. Despite our best efforts, the sugars is super common with black folks. 1.3 million black Americans are currently living with it today. In fact, it's so common that I already have it. So that's from an episode of Blackish called Sugar Daddy. It's where Dre gets diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and he's learning how to deal with it, how to manage it, how to get help from his family, how to approach it, the fears, the stigmas, all of that. And there are so many great moments in that episode. I think it's really an important one that you can watch if you want to learn about type 2 diabetes and the things that you shouldn't say to people whenever you found, find out that they have diabetes. I think that it's a really fascinating look from the perspective of somebody who actually has diabetes. So Anthony Anderson, the actor who plays Dre in Blackish lives with type 2 diabetes. There were a couple things that still feel a bit stigmatizing. There are many factors that contribute to diabetes, and so those three obesity, inactivity, and poor diet while they are big factors, they are not the only factors, and I think that those always get looked at as kind of the baseline. And so that again perpetuated that, you know people with diabetes wouldn't have diabetes if they didn't have obesity, if they would just eat right, and if they would just get moving. And that is not always the truth. I think the other thing that I appreciated about this episode is that they really speak to the social determinants of health. So they mention that 
you know, if you live in a food desert where all that you have around is fast food and you don't have a grocery store with fresh food near you, that can impact your ability to eat healthy. If you work long hours and you have a job that continually takes up all of your time and then maybe you're going to a second job, maybe then you have a family that you have to take care of, your health might not be the first thing on your list and it might be difficult to prioritize for that. I also think that it's really fascinating that they talk about how many people are living with type 2 diabetes in the United States, specifically people of color, specifically black people. And I think that that is such a needed and great magnifying glass on the issue of diabetes because it's something that we don't always talk about in our community. I think the other thing is that the one thing that I would criticize about this is calling diabetes the sugars because that again perpetuates the stereotype and the stigma that diabetes is caused by sugar when in fact it does not have much to do with sugar at all. It has to do with blood glucose, but it doesn't have to do with like sugar as people think of it. So I think that this is overall a really good means of storytelling. The whole episode is great and I'm sorry that I can't show it <laughs> in this entire video, but it's, you know, I'll definitely leave a link to it so that it's something that you can explore and watch if you're interested in learning about type 2 diabetes. Like that segment kind of said, everybody knows somebody who's living with diabetes and even if you don't think that you know someone with diabetes, it's probably that they are not talking about it because of a discomfort and because of this shame and the stigma that comes along with having diabetes. So I just think that it's something that's interesting to think about. You, you know, people, people will always say that diabetes is an invisible illness. It's not that invisible, but I think people feel more comfortable when they don't have to speak about it and they don't have to expose themselves for having an illness that people regard negatively. All right, that's it for this video. Be sure to catch some of the other videos in my stigma series. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you have any other pop culture references to diabetes that you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to explore some more of these because I just think that they're really interesting and the overall perception of diabetes in pop culture is something that's super interesting. Thanks for watching and take care of yourselves. See you in the next one. Bye!